We are counting down toward today's launch of the STS-52 mission and all is proceeding on schedule here in phone room 3 and out at launch pad 39B. We're standing by momentarily to have the flight crew in the suit up room. And we've got Commander Jim Weatherby, Mission Specialist Charles Lacey Veach, Pilot Mike Baker giving a thumbs up for today. He's ready to go. Here's Mission Specialist Bill Shepard. He's the most experienced shuttle member of the crew today. He's making his third trip in the shuttle this morning. And here's Canadian payload specialist Steve McLean making his first trip aboard the shuttle today. And mission specialist Tammy Jernigan is uh, getting her helmet on. Commander Jim Weatherby. Pilot Mike Baker, Mission Specialist Steve McLean, Amy Jernigan, Bill Shepard, and Lacey Beach. Crew is now getting on board the astronaut van and will be taking about 15 20 minute ride out to launch pad 39B. This is uh, what the 195 foot level at launch pad B. The flight crew is uh, making their way across the orbiter access arm to the uh, white room where they will be assisted by the closeout crew in getting ready for today's launch. Commander Jim Weatherby now greeting members of the closeout crew. He will be the first one to get inside the orbiter Columbia. Payload specialist Steve McLean from Canada will be riding in the mid-deck of the orbiter. He is also being assisted right now by the closeout crew at Pad B. He is one of six Canadian astronauts selected in December of 1983. He was designated as the payload specialist to fly with the Can-X-2 set of Canadian experiments, experiments that are flying on board Columbia. Pilot Mike Baker is now being assisted uh, with his flight suit. He's a 38-year-old Navy captain from Lemoor, California, making his second trip aboard the shuttle today. Mission specialist Tammy Jernigan is being assisted with her flight suit, getting ready to climb aboard Columbia today. Tammy and Charles Lacey Veach and pilot Mike Baker are posing for pictures and Commander Weatherby is making voice checks. Mission Specialist Bill Shepard is now being assisted to get aboard the shuttle. He's a 43-year-old captain in the United States Navy. He was born in Oak Ridge, Tennessee and will be making his third shuttle flight as a mission specialist today. Uh, team is continuing to stand by, and uh, we will await to uh, see if we get word that the weather is acceptable. Columbia Launch Director. Here to ground one. Idiot. Okay, Thanks, Jim. Go ahead, sir. Hi, Jim. Well, it uh, looks okay. I guess it's appropriate that we held the weather for the ex-weather coordinator, but uh, we're comfortable to proceed, and if you are, we will do that. Well, sir, it's probably a lot harder for you than it is for us. Uh, we've been having a good time sitting here, and uh, thanks for all the work, and we are go. Three main engines are being gimbaled and positioned for launch. In just a few minutes, the gaseous oxygen vent hood will be retracted.
Columbia OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, and our thoughts ride with you today. Okay, thank you very much. T minus 31 seconds. Okay, let's go for auto sequence start. Columbia's four redundant computers have primary control of critical vehicle functions for the remainder of the count. T minus 20 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8. We have a go for engine start. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and liftoff of Columbia on an ambitious 10-day international research flight. Roll program, Houston. Roger, roll, Columbia. Houston, Houston now controlling Columbia's roll to course for its planned orbit. Columbia now traveling 600 miles an hour, one mile east of the launch pad, altitude three and a half miles. Columbia, Houston, go at throttle up. Okay, Houston, go at throttle up. Three engines on Columbia now back at full throttle, good hydraulic systems, good electrical systems. Altitude at 12 miles. Columbia is nine miles east of the launch pad. Current speed, 2,100 miles an hour. Columbia has now burned more than two and a half million pounds of propellant since its liftoff. Shuttle now weighs less than half of what it did a minute and 50 seconds ago. Flight controllers now standing by for burnout and separation of the twin solid rockets. Booster officer confirms a good solid rocket booster separation. Altitude now 28 miles. Downrange from the Kennedy Space Center 34 miles. Columbia traveling 3,100 miles an hour. Two engine banjo, Columbia. Two engine banjo. And Columbia Houston, performance nominal. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, this television from Columbia is a videotape taken yesterday of the opening of Columbia's cargo bay doors uh, just after Columbia reached orbit. Currently on board uh, the spacecraft, Commander Jim Weatherby is uh, performing an alignment of the inertial measurement units. Uh, that's a daily job done on board uh, during a mission, which uh, uses stars to uh, update the navigation uh, constantly on board. Columbia's crew members, Mission Specialist Tammy Jernigan and Pilot Mike Baker and uh, Mission Specialist Bill Shepard are wearing shirts with the colors of the Italian flag uh, in honor of the day's activities, uh, deploying the laser geodynamic satellite and the Italian research interim stage combination, uh, which is a joint project between the Italian Space Agency and NASA. Columbia, we're complete through step three of the deploy countdown. We'll hold off on mechanical sequence start until 23 minutes prior to deploy. We can unless you'd like otherwise. Payloads conference. We concur. We concur, Tammy. Houston, Columbia for payloads. The setup is complete, and we're ready to begin the deploy countdown. We copy, Tammy. And, Tammy, you have a go for deploy. Okay, they'll understand. Go for deploy. Affirmative. Houston, Columbia, mechanical sequence is active and the sun shield is opening. Copy. We copy Tammy and we got a good view. And uh, in the aft portion of Columbia's cargo bay, the sun shield's protecting the 
a laser geodynamic satellite and its booster stages have now uh, opened totally, uh, revealing the satellite. And uh, Apogee kick motor, which is mounted atop the satellite, also uh, still in the payload bay at the bottom of the satellite is the Italian research interim stage. Okay. Yeah, I see stop motion now at 49 okay. seconds. And I don't see the open end. There we are, open. Satellite now working its way up to uh, the proper revolutions per minute. Currently spinning at about uh, 60 revolutions per minute. Should get up to an uh, area from 65 to 70 revolutions per minute. And uh, the payloads officer reports now. The grabbers are withdrawn. The spin table is at 65 RPM. Everything looks great on board. Hey, we copy. Payloads, everything We copy, good Tammy, and it looks good down here. Light payloads, we see the fire, come in. Copy, we see the fire. Houston, Columbia, we see a good deploy, and we have phase lock and synced it. Payloads, copy. We copy. And Columbia, we understand a good deploy. Uh, congratulations, a uh, great job on deploying Legios. Thank you, Houston, and a reproduce team, Legios 2. And we copy Columbia, way to go. Mission Specialist Tammy Jernigan is now going through uh, procedures to safe uh, the support equipment for the laser geodynamic satellite that's left in Columbia's cargo bay. Payloads officer here reports that uh, the deploy looked very good from the ground and uh, that the laser geodynamic satellite and its accompanying boosters, the Italian research interim stage and Apogee kick motor, all look to be in very good shape.
We see a straight line on the screen right now, but that's because this uh, this is where we are in the uh, in the data. But uh, as we cross the terminator, this, these values go up and down. And just for your interest, the oxygen flux right now is 1.09 times 10 to the 15 uh, outside the shuttle. And we have the, the temperature of the crystal is on the top or is on the bottom set of data, and the frequency of the crystal is uh, the top set of data here. And the oxygen flux is over on the on the right. And so probably for the first time, we are watching uh, the atmosphere breathe as uh, we circle the Earth. This is Mission Control Houston. This is the view of Columbia's mechanical arm as seen through the windows of the cockpit as the crew films and photographs the Melio experiment, materials exposure in low Earth orbit. A set of three uh, plates on the arm which are filled with more than 350 different material samples and are one of the Canadian experiments on board to study how well those various materials hold up against the corrosive effects of atomic oxygen as a atomic oxygen is encountered by them in earth orbit. This is mission control, this is a... Uh, Sam, I never realized on my last flight because I didn't have a guy like Steve explaining all this stuff to me, but... Uh the part of the what looks to be the horizon there is really the top of the atmosphere, and you can see stars through the atmosphere there. I used to think that was the surface of the Earth there that you see glowing, but it's really the top of the atmosphere. The Earth horizon is uh, in the picture a little bit higher, where the stars appear as they come up above the horizon. pretty amazing stuff on a moonless night to see the atmosphere glowing like that. And it really looks about just like that. That's almost a true uh, reproduction that you see with your eyes. Steve tells me it's caused by dual heating. The uh, atoms of oxygen smashing together, they get excited. They go up to a higher energy state, and when they relax, they give off photons. This is Mission Control. This is a videotape uh, playback of Orbiter Glow observations recorded by the crew earlier aboard Columbia. Commander Jim Weatherby has uh, been giving us a description of uh, what causes this phenomena. We have a pretty exciting series of uh, Canadian experiments with the space vision system that we will perform uh, late in the mission with the Canadian target assembly out of the payload bay, uh, and Lacey and Tammy will uh, unberth that payload and uh, take some measurements with the Canadian Space Vision System using that payload as a target. Uh, and they will be able to accurately position the arm, hopefully more accurately than we've been able to uh, do so before with the existing instrumentation on board the orbiter. And hopefully the Canadian Space Vision System or a system like it will be used in the future for precise maneuvering of payloads or vehicles, uh, such as construction of the space station or performing the rendezvous on the space station. Mission Control Houston, this uh, view is from uh, the machine vision system for the robotic arm as it uh, centers the Canadian target assembly. This uh, view shows the display that uh, an operator sees in the aft cockpit of Columbia as uh, he moves the arm about a precise triangle above the cargo bay uh, using the vision system for a guide.
way today. I'm uh, tied up against the bulkhead here. Uh, what I'm currently in is the lower body negative pressure device. It's a medical experiment designed to assess the human body's ability to re-enter uh, or readapt to the Earth's gravity. As you know, when we go up into space under the absence of gravity, the blood shifts uh, from the lower extremities up to the upper extremities and to the head. The body perceives this as an increase in fluid, and it gets rid of the fluid uh, up in space. Now, once we re-enter back down into the Earth's gravity, we essentially are fluid depleted, and so we have to be very careful and stay rehydrated uh, in when we get when, when we're up here on, on Earth. Uh, when we're up there in orbit. This device I'll be in for another couple of hours, I guess, and it's pulling a negative pressure of about 30 millimeters of mercury, uh, and it's uh, making the blood go back down to my lower extremities, and I can fluid load. It's a simulation of what will happen on reentry. I'll turn it over to Shep, uh, and he'll tell you a little bit about what he's doing. Well, um, mostly what I'm doing right now is we're running a furnace. I'll talk about it in just a second, but I'm tracking uh, Jim Weatherby's uh, vital signs on a computer just to keep track as we do this uh, negative uh, pressure on his lower body just to make sure that we, we keep him healthy. We're doing it on the uh, screen on the left. On the right, I've got uh, a uh, grid computer that's controlling a furnace over to my right. It's the uh, first time we've flown this on the shuttle. And it's an experiment. We have two furnaces inside. They're running at fairly high temperatures, uh, upwards of 850, 900 degrees centigrade. There are two samples on each side of the furnace. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to go crystals uh, by heating the materials up high enough where they become vapor and then crystallize in one solid uh, crystal. And it's uh, sort of new technology, and, and hopefully uh, this kind of process will give us uh, the ability to commercially produce a lot of materials such as uh, detectors and semiconductor devices that we, we don't enjoy uh, the ability to do right now. And it's probably one of the most important commercial uses of space uh, in the next decade. Here we have a, an experiment uh, that we'll spend a little bit of time on uh, on this mission. Uh, it may be the most important experiment that we do if we're successful, because what we're trying to do is to separate out white blood cells. We're trying to learn in this application how we can separate good white blood cells from cancerous white blood cells. And there's a, a neat there's a neat little trick that allows you to understand the surface characteristics of a cell, and each surface has a wants to be in one particular chamber, and the cancerous cells will go in one direction, and the normal cells will go in the other direction. And hopefully the resolution of this separation will be such that, uh, such that uh, we can use this in what's called a bone purging technique. The technique is where you may have a child with leukemia, and you take out his bad cells along with his good, you separate them up in space, bring his good cells back down to the ground, irradiate the child just before you repurge his good cells in, and it may be a clinical application for leukemia. Thanks. Um, we photograph the land and the clouds and the water, not just for scientific purposes, but because they're very beautiful. Um, as Bakes mentioned, we'll be coming up over Baja, California, and I've chosen the Lenhoff camera today. In order to take a picture, we set the time. I'm going to use one two fiftieth of a second. We set an f-stop, and Spock, our computer, is very helpful. It's telling us to set an f-stop of 8.0. So I'll set my f-stop, I'll point out the window, and I have a wealth of gorgeous targets because the Earth is always a beautiful view. Here, here I have an instrument that uh, follows the sun as it sets, and by pointing this instrument out the window at the sun, as it's setting in this fashion here, if the sun was there, then we can find out how much ozone is in the upper atmosphere. And this particular instrument will serve as a calibration basis for the uh, World Ozone Network uh, in the next couple of years. Okay. Good morning. The heat pipe performance experiment comes out of Hughes Aircraft, and it has some very practical applications to the design of heat pipe systems, which are used on commercial satellites. Heat pipes, quite simply, take heat and transport them from one place to another. For instance, on a communication satellite from a hot electronics package out into space. There's not a great deal of data on the microgravity performance of heat pipes. 
And so during our mission, we're going to get some sort of idea of how well heat pipes perform in microgravity, meaning how well they transport heat. And we ran a series of tests this morning um, investigating the productivity of heat pipes. Uh, some of the tests, the heat pipes were static, and for some of the other tests, the heat pipes were spinning, because as you know, some of these satellites in orbit are spin stabilized. And back to you, Jim. Mission Control Houston, uh, this is television live from Columbia. As uh, Mission Specialist Tammy Jernigan sets up the ergometer or the stationary bicycle in preparation for an exercise period. This is television from Columbia's lower deck as uh, Jernigan can begins her exercise on the stationary bicycle. This is Mission Control. This is video replay from Columbia of a test called DTO or Detail Test Objective number 657. It's a footage that the crew has recorded of the operations of the new fan separator for the waste containment system. This is mission control. Um, the, the legs with the socks on uh, sticking out of the uh, overhead area are belong to Lay Veach. He has an overhead panel pulled down in the mid-deck area performing the filter cleaning. This is a standard part of housekeeping aboard every shuttle mission. The crew opens the uh, panels where the filters are located for the onboard air circulation system and uh, they inspect those for any debris or little uh, particulate matter that may have collected there. If it's heavy enough, they, they clean it. Uh, if the filter has to, is uh, completely covered with debris, they may change it out. So that's what uh, Veach is doing at the moment. We were a little worried, uh, Steve was a little worried about uh, trying to fit in those, uh, that pin block and damaging the pin, so we uh, disassembled the uh, battery box And then, and then uh, rooted the uh, wires for the uh, breakout box in through there, and then uh, put the pin block back in. So I'm testing uh, lead one and two right now, red to black. This is Mission Control Houston. Mission Specialist Lacey Veach on the flight deck of Columbia is currently setting up the Sun Photospectrometer Earth Atmosphere Measurement Instrument. It's a handheld instrument that's used to measure the uh, ozone and nitrogen compounds in the upper atmosphere by uh, using a spectrometer. They played the monster match. It was a graveyard smash. It caught on in a flash. They played the monster match. Out from his coffin, Drax's voice did ring. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. Opened the lid and shook his fist and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? Good morning, Columbia. Happy Halloween. <laughs> and Columbia, be advised that we're trying to work some trick-or-treat time in the, today's flight plan for you. And Columbia, we're with you on the flight deck. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is Commander Jim Weatherby from the spaceship Columbia. Uh, we'll be giving our final mission status summary. We've enjoyed giving them over the past week. Uh, it's been a great mission. It's been very rewarding for us, uh, starting with, of course, the launch 10 days ago. It, it's a tremendous feeling riding on top of a rocket built by hundreds of thousands of people around the country, uh, and we all put our trust in those people and they sure produced a great product. Uh, the vehicle has been outstanding. It's the 13th flight of Columbia in its history, 
and we've had so few problems, it's incredible. Uh, that enabled us to concentrate on the science, and I need to tell you that the science worked very well, too. All of the experiments worked uh, the way they were built and designed and planned. Uh, we had a few minor problems. Uh, Steve McLean, in particular, was busy the whole week and a half trying to fix one particular experiment, which he finally was successful today, an experiment called SPEAM. Uh, and that finally worked, and so I think we ended up with about 100% mission success and, and, and all of our objectives met. We think the science return will be beneficial uh, for several years to come, uh, and it should keep the scientists very happy. Uh, the various experiments that we had had uh, some conflicting constraints down in the mid-deck, and it made it fairly difficult, but Mission Control in Houston uh, made just a tremendous flight plan for us, enable us to go from one experiment to the next, and in some cases working experiments simultaneously. Uh, so we're very proud for uh, the work that they did, and, and we're thankful that we were able to pull the mission off with as much success as we did. It's been a good mission for us. We hope to see you in a couple of years, and so from onboard Columbia, we thank you for listening uh, for the past couple of uh, days, and we hope to give you some more mission status summaries in a couple of years if we're lucky enough to fly again. And so, happy Halloween from Columbia.
Houston, we're not sure, but we think we may have a volcano uh, in the center of your field of view now. Okay, yeah, yeah, we copy. We see the same thing. This is Mission Control. These camera views are from Coming the camcorder. Coming up here on the right, you can see some snow-capped peaks with the sun uh, reflect shining off of them. And all of those, if you look closely, are volcanic peaks. Hey, Sam, that's the volcano we told you guys about last night, the one we saw smoking. Copy. This is Mission Control. Columbia is crossing the coastline of South America uh, at just about between Chile and Peru. Uh, then we'll go across uh, Bolivia and a tiny little slice Houston, of Paraguay. I think you can see the, uh, the volcanic plume, or what we think is a volcanic plume, in the uh, upper uh, left quarter of the picture. Understand that we get a good view down here. Thanks. This is Mission Control, Houston. Uh, Columbia is now moving out, uh, about to out across the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. Uh, in view in the, of the payload cameras right now is the southernmost tip of the Sinai Peninsula. At the bottom portion of the screen, the long snaking line, is the Nile River. Spectacular views like these are provided to us uh, from the payload bay cameras of Columbia. Uh, this particular view is from an altitude of about 156 nautical miles. Now moving into view is uh, the northern horn of Australia, also known as the Cape York Peninsula. This is Mission Control Houston. Columbia is now passing over uh, South America and it uh, looks like there is some storm activity over that continent. The uh, flashes that can be seen th on the downlink uh, is lightning crackling through the area. Uh, this area specifically is right over the uh, right over Argentina and Paraguay, uh, real near the border there. Columbia moves eastward across the uh, northern Sahara Desert. Uh, the crew is now powering up from a uh, power down that the spacecraft has been in for the past eight days. As the day wears on for the crew, um, once that uh, test is completed, the standard day before entry and landing checks will be performed.
that's a thorough check out of all the flight control systems, all the systems that uh, Columbia will use for tomorrow's uh, return to Earth, as well as a test firing of all the various steering jets on board the spacecraft. Columbia Houston, you have a go for payload bay door closing. Roger, go for payload bay door closing and work, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston as we're taking live television from the shuttle landing facility. Entry Flight Director Jeff Bannell is polling all positions here in the flight control room to get a go or no go for the deorbit burn. At this point, it appears that all elements are in place and ready to support a, a deorbit and entry operation here. Columbia, Houston. And we'd like to give you a go for the deorbit burn at this time. Uh, when we uh, pick you up on the other side of uh, the Tedris uh, ZOE, we expect to have some rad ratty calm on the West Tedris while in the burn attitude. Okay, copy, go for the burn. Columbia, we saw the same thing, good residuals. Columbia, we see you on energy approaching the hack. No change to the KSC weather. Winds are 090 at 5, peak 8. Derotation at 175 knots. You are go for nominal drag shoot deploy. Okay, 175 and nominal drag shoot, thanks. Altitude 58,000 feet. Columbia will very shortly be uh, passing back through the sound barrier and uh, flying at subsonic speeds. As it does so, it'll be sounding twin sonic booms momentarily. And we have confirmation that the uh, crew commander is now taking over manual control of the vehicle. And Columbia is just about to initiate the about to initiate the heading alignment phase. Columbia will be making a right overhead turn of 235 degrees to line up for a uh, south to north final approach and landing. Altitude 30,000 feet, rate of descent 230 feet per second. Columbia on energy at the 180. Roger. Altitude 25,000 feet, range 13 miles. Pre flare still underway as uh, Columbia begins to modulate the uh, steepness of its approach to the runway.
Standing by for landing gear deployment. And we have main gear down and locked. Final flare. And touchdown, main gear touchdown. Rotation underway. Drag chute should be deployed momentarily. A good drag chute deploy and there's your touchdown. Columbia returns to its point of origin at the Kennedy Space Center. Roger, we'll stop Columbia. Stand by for post landing deltas and beautiful landing to a great mission. Okay, thanks a lot. We're standing by. <laughs> 